Good morning and welcome to Bible study today on this Tuesday. I hope you all are doing well uh, and uh, being able to make it through uh, um, all that we're going through in our in our world um, with uh, the virus, with the heat wave, and with uh, with additional fires here in in, uh, in California. So praying everyone is is staying safe and uh, staying focused um, on the Lord. So we are uh, doing our Bible study here, and uh, I know the last uh, um, few times it's been a little bit choppy on the internet here. I've got uh, the preschooler doing Zoom downstairs, and uh, the um, the older one taking community college classes upstairs. Um, so uh, I need to figure out a way to get stronger uh, internet so everything flows smoothly. So if you're able to see this and hear this um, okay, let me know. If there's problems, let me know um, as well, and uh, we're going to we're gonna get into it, um, and uh, let's uh, let's pray. I want to particularly pray for those that are, are dealing with the second wave of, of fires we're going through, particularly Lou Osborne. Lou is someone that's been joining us for the Bible studies. He was a part of our church when he lived here in San Jose, uh, and then he's moved uh, moved away. But uh, he's been. Uh, keep me updated that uh, he had to evacuate last night uh, um, up in the, um, the 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 creek fires, um, and he had to leave. And he has um, owns horses, so he had to evacuate with all the horses. So we're praying for for Lou and uh, and his family and all those um, dealing with these these fires. So uh, let's uh, let's pray and uh, and we'll get into it. Lord God, we turn to you and we thank you that you are our strong tower. Um, that we can run to you and and, uh, and find our refuge and our hope in you. And so we pray for that in the middle of all that's going on in our world and, and in our lives, that we would turn to you, find our hope in you, to know that you are still at work and we can join you in your work. Um, so we join you in all that, that you are doing, um, that we may, um, may find our purpose and our hope in you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, well, again, I hope uh, we're coming through clear. So if uh, if you're seeing this clear, just uh, let me know in the chat so I can uh, uh, know that I'm being heard and not just talking out into uh, into cyberspace. Um, but as we do, we start out with God's sightings. We're aware of the difficult things going on in our world, but there's also the presence of God. So uh, share with me uh, in, and with us in the chats uh, and in the comment section, uh, what's one way that you've seen the, the presence of God in your life recently? Uh, I'll share one of mine. So uh, for me, just yesterday, um, all around was a God sighting. It was a nice, uh, you know, this with all that's going on, we have things like a holiday, like Labor Day. I'm like, eh, all the days are the same. Doesn't really matter. Um, but actually, kind of felt like a, a bit of a, a holiday yesterday. Able to really rest, take things easy. Becca took um, uh, Alyssa out for uh, a while, so I had like two hours um, in the house by myself, which was really nice, and able to spend. An extended time with uh, with the Lord, and uh, and actually I was uh, going through some stuff, and I'm like, man, I want to uh, um, I want to read a, a a chapter of a book, but I can't remember what the book is, uh, and I think it'd be encouraging to me. And I was trying to think of it, and then I realized, oh, it's my book. It's the book that I have been writing, but haven't finished and haven't been working on in in quite some time. Uh, but it was kind of fun to uh, pull up a, a chapter of my unpublished, unfinished um, a book and uh, and read it and be like, oh, this encouraged me. I don't know if this is ever going to get published, if anyone else in the world is ever going to read it, um, but um, but it's encouraging to myself. So it's uh, that was kind of a God sighting of, of uh, of Jordan of uh, a couple of years ago, encouraging Jordan of, of today. So knowing that God uses what uh, what we do. So that was an encouragement to me. Um, so uh, we'll get into God's word this morning. I'm hearing that the video is a little bit choppy. Um, that's okay. It's just, I'm not doing anything exciting. So uh, um, <laughs> as, long, as long as you can hear me, I guess that's uh, that's good. I'll work on it. We'll see what we can do to, to upgrade things to uh, to make it so the video is going to be clearer. But hopefully, as long as you can hear it, that's the uh, that's the important thing. Um, and uh, well, I'll put up the scriptures on the screen too. So uh, that's kind of what we'll be looking at anyway. So um, we are jumping into John chapter four, verses twenty-seven through forty-two. Um, so last time, and uh, we looked at the beginning of this passage in the first part of John chapter 4, and it was uh, talking about the woman at the well. And uh, as we talked about this, we kind of made it halfway through the chapter and uh, left at this kind of um, 
cliffhanger uh, where this uh, woman, this Samaritan woman we talked about, that this is a place that, that most uh, Jewish people wouldn't want to go or people they wouldn't want to interact with. But Jesus does. He goes and he interacts with this, uh, this woman. And uh, she wants to pull this water from the well. And he says, I have water that, um, that you drink of and you will never be thirsty again. And uh, she says, well, the Messiah will explain all these things to us eventually. And, uh, and Jesus, the last line we looked at last time, he says, I who speak to you am he. And so uh, now at, at this moment, we have Jesus, who's this uh, Jewish man talking to this Samaritan woman in the middle of the day. Um, and where we're going to pick it up is Jesus' disciples come back and they see this interaction. Just then, his disciples returned. And we're surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asks, what do you want or why are you talking with her? Um, so this is an interesting thing. The disciples come back and they're like, Jesus, you're not doing what Jesus is supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be waiting for us and we're, we, we're going to go get you some food and bring it back to you. Um, and you're talking to a Samaritan and you're talking to a woman. You're breaking all of our social codes here. Uh, but it's really interesting to say that the scripture says, yeah, but they didn't say what they were thinking. Isn't that interesting that sometimes we, we have things and, and we feel a certain way, we, we, we think something, but we don't really say what's on our mind. And that's what the disciples, they, they're like, um, we just won't say anything here, um, even though they're feeling, uh, they're feeling this way. And that, it's interesting, you know, we wonder, well, how does John uh, know this? Well, uh, uh, John uh, is you know, one of the disciples. And uh, he, so he knows, uh, he's not just talking about them. He's saying, yeah, this was my experience. I thought this, but I didn't, I didn't say it. Um, and then the woman, uh, then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I did. Could this be the Christ? They came out of the town and they made their way toward him. Uh, now this is interesting, right? In contrast to the disciples who who keep in what they're they're thinking and and they they don't know what to say, the woman goes back and she tells everything, um, and she goes to the town. And, and as we talked about last time, uh, it's very probable that that uh, because of this woman's background, the fact that we see her collecting water in the middle of the day means that she might have been kind of ostracized or a bit of an outcast in her community, someone that was looked down upon. Jesus says that you've had all these. Uh, um, these husbands that you don't have anymore and you have a man that's not your husband we don't know if that means that she was divorced or her husbands had died um, but either way she's looked down upon in society and so maybe she could have also said hey I'm gonna keep this to myself but she goes to her town and she says hey come see this man who, who told me everything I did could this be the Christ could this be the Messiah why does she speak to them, to these people that, that maybe she doesn't have a great relationship with? Because she has great news. She has great news and she doesn't want to keep it to herself. Doesn't it seem uh, these days that it's the, um, the bad news that seems to spread a lot? Anytime someone has anything that seems like something more terrible is going to happen or there's a conspiracy or there's, there's things that are going on that's going to get worse, man, that news travels really, really fast. Um, but when we have something good, when we have great news, are we willing to spread that as well? And this woman has great news, and she's ready to spread it. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? So they left Jesus at the well so that they could go get, you know, go get something to eat. Um, and uh, probably, you know, maybe tr try to find uh, some Jewish, some kosher uh, food. Maybe they didn't want to eat the food of the Samaritans. They went someone else, somewhere else. They came back um, and they said, uh, here, Rabbi, eat something. Um, Rabbi means teacher. And uh, Jesus says, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm satisfied. I, I'm, I'm, e I'm eating food that you don't know anything about. And disciples are like, oh, maybe someone else gave him a snack. Maybe someone else gave him food. But uh, Jesus clarifies it. My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say four months more and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for the harvest. So I love this, um, 
this line where Jesus says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. What does that mean? So um, think about it, of, of what food is to, to us. Food is that which, uh, which nourishes us. Food is that which, which, uh, which sustains us, which gives us energy. And the disciples are saying, you need to eat. And Jesus is saying, yeah, I'm eating. I'm taking in what I need to do that is energizing me, that is giving me strength. And what is that? As you all read this uh, to, uh, together in this, this scripture, what is the food that is, uh, that is sustaining? It's the work of God. He says, Jesus says, when I do God's will, when I do what he created me to do, and when I finish his work, the work that he laid out for me, I'm satisfied. Think about that, friends. We're, we are all trying to figure out the things that are satisfying to us, that w which we can do to, to keep us going, that which is going to sustain us. Um, and when we are at our best, when we are most fulfilled, is when we're doing God's will. When we are able to discern what he has for us, the calling, the purpose that he has for us, and doing it. So uh, a lot of times, we, I think when we get tired and we get worn out and we think, oh, I need something to refresh, the idea that most of us think of is, well, let me do less. Let me stop working. Let me, you know, take a break. Let me, you know, uh, take a holiday. The idea of uh, the most relaxing thing is maybe like going to an island somewhere at these days and age. It, these, these days, I don't know how we would get to that island, but <laughs> to be able to be on an island, uh, you know, tropical paradise, those kind of things, uh, oh, that would be food for my soul. And uh, yet yeah, what Jesus is saying, the food for his soul isn't the lack of work, but it's actually doing the right work, doing, doing that which God made, you, made him to do. And what God made him to do is to be able to come in and bring hope to the world. And so this interaction that he has with, with this woman at the well who is hopeless and he's giving her hope and he's speaking truth and, and he's pointing her um, back to the Father. And that he's saying, that's my food. That's my food. Um, and so here's the, the question for, for you friends today um, is, what's your food? What is that which sustains you? Jesus says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me to, to finish his work. So if we would apply it to our own lives, that it is satisfying, it is fulfilling, um, it, it is nourishing for us to do God's will for you. Then the question is, what's God's will for you? What's the will of him who sent you? And what's the work that, he's, that he is doing that he's letting you join in to be a part of? I think right now in these coronavirus times, it, it's hard because uh, maybe there are certain things that you thought was God's will for you and, and certain things that you were doing, whether it's, it was your job or the way you were living your life or a ministry you were doing, and now all of that's a little bit upside down. And so what we have to do is keep coming back to the Lord and just saying, God, what, what's your will for me today? How, how do I join you in your work today? And so I'd love for you to, maybe you know that already. Share that with us in the comments or in the chat. What does it look like for you to do God's will today and to join him in his work today? Jesus goes on to say, don't you say, and he kind of uses this um, agriculture um, quote that would be common in, in his day as far as we know. Do not say four months more and then the harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for the harvest. Even now, the reaper draws his wages. Even now, he harvests the crop for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps, is true. I have sent you to reap, I have sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work, and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Okay, so what, what Jesus is saying is, again, he's using these, this agriculture term um, that, that where, where people would say, oh, once you see these these signs, then you know in a few months we'll be able to harvest. And uh, Jesus is saying, as you look at the signs, um, there's n there's the harvest right now. Now, what is Jesus talking about? He's talking about literal um, harvesting of crops. No, he's talking about uh, the even now he harvests the crop for what eternal life. And so what what uh, Jesus is saying is that he says, open your eyes and look at the fields. 
they are ripe for the harvest. And when he's looking, saying the fields, he's saying people, that, that there are, are people who are ready to come to know Jesus Christ and to be able to, to be uh, harvested, so to speak, for eternal life. Um, and so we think about it in, in, in that way um, uh, is that to, to have a, a, a crop, you're preparing the ground and you're planting the seed and you're watering it and you're caring for it in a certain point, it, um, there's, there's the harvest time. And so that's how it is for, um, for us as, as people, that, that God has prepared the way in your life to come to know Christ. Uh, and there are ways that he planted seeds and the ways that he watered it and the ways that he cared for, for you. And at a certain point, there was a moment in your life where someone shared the gospel with you or gave you a Bible or, or, um, or shared uh, a book or a sermon or something with you or a song. And in that moment, you were able to encounter Christ in a special way and he reached out to you and you had that moment of saying, I want to turn to you, Jesus, and turn away from death and turn away to life. Or maybe you haven't had that time. Maybe today's that time. Maybe today's your harvest time where you're giving your life to Christ. But what Jesus is saying is that there's also other people in, in this world, and the time is now. The time is now for th them to come to know Christ. And do you know that's right now, right now, even in the middle of everything else that's going on in our world, even in the middle uh, of difficulty, it's actually harvest time. This is a time where, where every person, we're all going to have to make our choices of whether we're, we're going to do our own thing, we're going to rely on our own strength, or we're, whether we're going to rely on the Lord. And now is the time for harvest. And so he's saying we can join in. He said, I've called you as the disciples. You get to reap uh, what others have, have sowed. You get to, um, to be the one to, to point people towards me, even though others have done the, the hard work of preparing the ground and, and planting the seed. Um, and so it is with us that what does it look like for you to be able to harvest? What does it look like for you to be able to, to share the gospel with those um, around you to the point where they would be able to come to know him? And this may seem hard. I know a lot of people kind of feel like the pressure of this. Oh, I'm supposed to do this and I'm supposed to do that. But look, we just see the example of the Samaritan woman here. Um, verse 39. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. Then they said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. So here we have uh, this, this great thing, and, and again, we can just see how uh, amazing the Lord is and how uh, he used John's ability as a storyteller just to put this great story together, that we have Jesus talking to this woman, uh, and then we have the disciples coming and Jesus saying, hey, now is the time for harvest. Now is the time. And the, the disciples may not understand at all, like, well, what does this, this mean? And then yet they're in this town, where the disciples kind of thought they were just passing through. We talked about this being a pit stop or a truck stop along the way. They're going through Samaria. They don't want to stop in this, the, this town, but they, they have to. Um, and, and on the way through, they stop and they stay actually two more days. And many people in that town, as it said, many more became believers. They, they, God had started a work in their life. And as Jesus just told the disciples, you're going to be able to reap a harvest. And so many people in this town come to know Jesus, and they, they start to believe. Why? How did it all start? It started with one person. It started with this Samaritan woman that had been through pain and uh, disgrace in her life. But she came and said, I'm going to speak up. Uh, remember when the disciples, they didn't say what was, uh, what was on their mind. But the woman, going back to verse 28, she went through the town. Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? She didn't keep it in. And so this is why we do things like God sightings here. What are the moments where, where you see God at work in your life? And, and we don't want to just share it to other believers. But when you're talking to friends and when you're connecting with them, what's the testimony that you're giving? They said uh, later on, we believe not just because of her testimony, um, but because 
we have now gotten to know him. But it started with her testimony. A and the question for, uh, for us is, what is the testimony? We go back to, to, to this verse. Uh, many Samaritans of that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. So what's the testimony that, that, that you're giving? When your family or when your friends call up and say, hey, how you doing? And, and uh, you know, are, are we just leaning into the, ah, everything's a mess and this is what's going on and my life's not how it should be, um, which is honest. Like, let's be honest. Like the, you know, unlike the disciples who didn't really share what's on their heart, be honest. If that's where, you're all, where you are, be honest. But when there are moments when you've seen the presence of God, when there are moments uh, when you're walking uh, in doing what the work of God is, um, let's be honest with that too. Let let's let's share with one another, um, both believers and not be non-believers, the truth of what God is doing in our lives. And if He is at work, and if you said, you know, it, being able to share, say, you know, things are rough, but I, I'm, you know, experiencing God's love in the middle of it. Thing, things are, are hard, but I, I'm, I'm finding ways that I'm seeing God's presence. You know, and, and just to be honest, don't pretend, don't do anything, don't say anything that's not real going on in your life. But as you really connect into what God is truly doing in your life, can we be real with that and be honest and share that testimony? Because as we do, um, then it starts this work for God to be able to do a, a greater work in people's lives. We open our eyes. Um, the, the fields are ripe for the harvest. And so that's... Uh, that's the, 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 the main idea here that we have in, in, uh, in this section of, of John, and, and we're going to continue to, uh, to work, our, work our way through it. Um, and uh, we, uh, yeah, I think we're, we're going to be able to, to end a little bit early uh, today. I, um, we, I'm, again, I apologize for the choppiness of the video. Um, we'll see if we can, can get those things worked out. We'll have on Thursday, we'll do a uh, Bible study again, but uh, I want to give you a heads up that starting next week, we're going to move to one time a week Bible study. Um, and that's because next week we are starting up our kids club after school ministry. Um, so I'm going to be leading a Zoom uh, Bible study for a whole bunch of, of elementary kids in the afternoon on Thursday. And it's just a little bit too much for me to do morning Bible study and uh, afternoon and prep both of those. Um, so. Uh, that means that for you guys need to, are going to sacrifice uh, for the children, uh, and I'll be, be doing those on Thursdays, but I'll continue just uh, our Bible studies on Tuesday. So we'll have once a week Bible study every Tuesday, 10 a.m. here, um, and, uh, and that will continue. So uh, again, this Thursday um, will be our last week uh, on the 10th of uh, the last week of um, Thursday Bible study, and sorry, next week we'll switch to um, Tuesdays only. So let me pray for us, and we will uh, close out. Let me know if there's other ways that we can be um, reaching out, caring for you and your family during these times. Uh, stay safe.